Hey, Pastor Steve Walter, I hope you're having an incredible day in Jesus. We're going to talk a little bit with some uh, questions and issues about evolution, specifically complexity, integration, and consciousness. Complexity, integration, and consciousness. You know, first of all, like the Miller Urey experiments, how did, how did non life come from non-life you know you've got laws of of biogenesis and abel genesis that life only comes from life so you know if all you've got is non-life an accidental solar system so to speak how did the first living thing begin i mean was it like frankenstein it's alive it's alive it's alive you got clive whoever talking to boris carlson you know it's alive it's alive is that how i mean how did this happen i mean electricity what processes we won't even get into the predecessing before that uh, of how the sun came into being how planets were formed uh, where was the uh, what used to be called the primeval atom they've probably got another name for it now if space and time was inside the speck where was the speck how did this where did the speck exist i mean all these various questions so how did life begin? And so then once you get life, how did complexity get in life? You got this impossibility of life, but let's say somehow it happened. How did that one single organism live and as one cell become a two cell, two cell become three, three, four, four, five. And then there's no such thing as any organisms between like five and 13 celled or six and 13 celled organisms. So how did it make that leap? And so where, okay, so in hostile environments as the early earth would have been according to evolutionary theory, how did it not only grow, but thrive? How did it survive? What did it eat? What mechanisms there? And then how did it become complex now usually when i'm asking questions like this the answer i get from evolutionists on the channel and i wonder there must be videos or books teaching evolutionists to ask this because they'll say you really don't understand evolution do you and i'm like yeah i really do i understand how it's supposed to work um where did you did you somebody tell you to say that it must be some type of apologetic from their viewpoint because it's just like yeah i really do it just it doesn't work um and it's not observable so it's not true science obviously because it's not observable so complexity is this real big thing and then once you get into complexity you get into incredibly complex organisms and you get into integration such as with the shoulder or the hip because now you've got your skeletal system you know your shoulder and the socket that's involved here it's got to be integrated with nerves it's got to be integrated you know with your optic system it's got to be integrated with veins and capillaries it's got to be uh integrated with a muscular system and it's all got to come into being you know, like so partial things you know they would say the alleles either one or two for a mutation to be positive to go forward has to be in a cell for that to occur but these are integrated systems that everything has to be functioning all at once whether it's your blood flow whether it's your brain your brain waves everything i remember like whitaker chambers he was an atheistic communist and how he came out of that he said he was just looking at his i think his two-year-old son's ear and thinking about the concave of the ear how that had to be perfect for sound to go in and for us to have understanding and if it wasn't perfect then you couldn't hear so there would have been a time unless you believe in some kind of embryological um, uh, leaps in the in the embryo and in the womb or unless you believe um, in leaps outside of the womb that that people were deaf for a long time and so in on and on and so forth and then all of the things people would have been blind because you go from two eyes to one eye behind the two eyes with the brain system. And so obviously none of these things are tenable. So you have co integration, complexity, and then consciousness. How does inanimate matter begin to think? How does it get a brain? How does it get instincts? How does it come up with morality? 
all of these things. So all these are very complex questions in evolutionary theory. And I, I would say, and a lot of like agnostics believe this and uh, rabbinical Jews, even Muslim uh, scientists and things, even communist scientists would say these are intractable problems that these you can't overcome these obstacles of complexity integration and consciousness and that's that is the reason why the postulation of the big bang becoming such force that it created multiverses because they realized statistically it was impossible for life and the complexity and the various forms of life that we have here on earth to come about and not just various forms of life but just everything from gravity on down um, different elements the way the earth the crust is the water beneath the earth the, all of these type things gases becoming solids uh, you know they would freely admit in the first few milliseconds to an indeterminate amount of time that the current laws of physics did not exist in what they would consider the big bang but there's see so to me as a thinking person i just couldn't accept it even you know i'm a christian and obviously i believe the word of god but even if i wasn't a christian i would want answers to this that i don't think they can provide and they haven't provided and i've tried to read the best that they've got to offer and i want to study the best that they've got to offer so i'm just going to be in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth um it's like what robert dick wilson you know they said what's the most profound thing you ever learned he's teaching i think at yale at that time or princeton had learned 46 languages and all that he said the most profound thing i know is jesus loves me this i know for the bible tells me so but there's so much wrapped into that the scientific archaeological historical philological linguistic uh, proofs of scripture you know and the historicity of Jesus Christ and everything in the Bible from Noah to Abraham and all on and so forth so I would just choose to believe the book and I believe it by faith but it's an evidential faith as well it's all the evidence is there so God bless talk with you later love you in Jesus name